Donald and John McMullen hanging with you here on Birds 365. Thank Mike Gill for coming on. Uh, Scott Grayson, Fox 29, going to join us in less than 20 minutes from now. Um, did want to note this, that uh, yesterday, it was I think it was yesterday, it was announced uh, that week 14, we got week 13 coming up this week. Week 14, NBC is flat. Yeah, I forgot Sunday to thank night them. Game. Forgot to thank them, Joey. Yes. The National I, Football I, I figured League. I'd do it for you. Um, because yes, John, those who have to work the game itself, Sunday night is a bit of a pain in the rear end. And John just did one this past week, so didn't necessarily need another one like that. Two weeks later, NBC has the capability and the flexibility to move in and out of games uh, to best serve their audience for uh, the big primetime game each and every single week. Uh, they moved away from Kansas City. For a very specific reason, it's called the Denver Broncos, uh, the team they were supposed to be playing, who right now are, if not a dumpster fire, at least a major mess. And I think NBC made the right decision. There was some talk that the game that could be flexed in would be the Eagles and Giants. They instead chose the Dolphins and the Chargers, which I would say NBC made the right call. I think that's the better of the two games to flex, too. And I did see some other speculation, various writers, um, that we could still get Giants-Eagles as a primetime game. That yeah. The final game of the season could be flexed to a night game when the Eagles come here to fill it up, when the Giants come here to Philadelphia and take on the Eagles. No chance, no shot, not happening. <laughs> By week 18, the Philadelphia Eagles will have already locked up home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And if you want to chide me for having my Eagle colored glasses on, it really isn't. It's just my football analysis of the situation, where they're at, what the standings say, what kind of team they have. Getting a little nervous about injuries. Yeah, I got a cop to that. But I believe the Eagles will have locked up everything by the time we get there. So, no. NBC will not be flexing Giants Eagles Week 18 to see the best of the Gardner Minshew highlight reel. Not yeah. happening. Don't worry about it, Johnny Mac. That game, I believe, has it even been scheduled? They, they leave the last game open, right? No, they the, yeah, they leave the on. last open. They want, and that was the concern um, from the league's perspective with the Eagles Giants. Uh, the Eagles only have one window open left to where they could be moved to prime time. So you're going to have to make a decision. If you wanted to move one of those Giants games to prime time, you're going to have to make the decision early. Um, and I think they're crossing their fingers that that uh, week 18 game is meaningful. I'm with you. I don't think it's meaningful going to be meaningful. For the Giants, but much like this week, Kansas City's never Well, they'll take play. it. They'll take that, by the way. They have been meaningful for anybody. Whether it's the Eagles have to win to fend off the Cowboys, whether it's the Giants have to win to get in the playoffs, they just want it to be meaningful in some fashion. And I think that will be the the primetime game uh, on the final weekend of the season. But you're you know, there's nothing you can do. You're you're rolling the dice. It's sort of a bet, um, but. I'm just happy that. All right, so I'm I'm asking you to make that bet. I know you don't have to make it, but I'm just getting your pre-read on it going into that week. It could be win, you're in, lose, you're out for the Giants. I kind of don't believe that either. I think the Giants will probably be locked into a playoff spot. I don't see it, Johnny Mac. That there's not going to be a reason to air that game. Uh, they could have chosen the, – the game was important to the Cowboys. Cowboys played all out last year in week number 18. If they had put that piece of crap on primetime uh, on Sunday night, NBC's fans would have had a, uh, a revolution. They would have said, why are we watching this garbage in the Eagles JV? It, not happening. There's no way that NBC is flexing into that game. Uh-uh. Um, I hope you're right. Unfortunately, I, I don't – I think if there's any meaning whatsoever, they're going to flex into it. Um, Why? Know, Eagles Giants. And then New York pulled out. No, it's the Giants against the Eagles JV. Yeah, but no, uh, 
look, if there was evidence that anybody turned off the NFL at any point, I'd agree with you, but there's but no then, evidence. Then why would you flex Kansas City and Denver this week? Because you pick well, your game. Not just, we could throw any game up there and they'll tune in because it's the NFL. They no, want uh, made a quality control decision. They want uh, they want meaningful games. I mean, they already took hits because, um, you know, if you can get it, Indianapolis, you know, had two, um, you know, recent primetime games. Nobody wants to see Indianapolis at this point muck up the clock with a first-time head coach. But, you know, <clears throat> you can't have winners every week. But, you know. That's their highest profile winner, uh, window, excuse me, uh, the the Sunday night game. And they want to make their broadcast uh, people as happy as possible. And they've set up this system. And uh, New York and Philadelphia is a big deal. Dallas is a big deal. We know the teams. Green Bay, even though they stink, um, you know, gets deference usually. There are certain teams that get this deference, and the Eagles are one of them. And the Giants are one of them when they're good. And, you know, the the beauty of, of the NFC East being relevant this year, the league is thrilled with it because of the markets. I mean, they're thrilled with it. And anytime those teams are relevant, they're excited about it. I'll give you two games right now that I think absolutely will be better games than the Eagles and the Giants. One is the Jets and the Dolphins. Because the Dolphins could be battling for the number one seed in the AFC with the uh, Bills. Shoot, maybe they're even in the fight with Kansas City for the number one seed overall. The Jets might need the game to make the playoffs. Uh, if they lose, they could be out. Both teams could have significant importance in that game. So I'll tell you, that game would be the choice over the Eagles or the Giants. Now, this is all contingent on... The Eagles don't need the game. I get that. I hope you understand I'm saying that. And this is a prediction I'm making week number 18. The Eagles are going to go to their backups. They've already shown they do it. They did it last year. They'll do it this year because actually more is at stake because that bye week is key rather than, oh, we're just playing for positioning. We know we're in as a wild card. Last year, when it didn't really make that big a deal, they pulled everybody this year where you're actually gaining that much more I'm telling you, the Eagles still aren't going to even uh, play their uh, – they'll sit in. Amazing number of their starters, practice squad guys all over the place. And I had one other game. Oh, Cowboys and, and Commanders. Because yeah. I think both of those teams will be in the fight for uh, the playoff spots, wild card and the like. What's the cap on the Sunday night game? Is there a cap, John, that a team can only be on so many times? There's Have a the cap Cowboys... on the on the prime time um, on the prime time number, um, and the Eagles are at the cap. They got one more. So how many prime time have the Eagles? Uh, I, I have to look it up. And how many have the Cowboys had? That's the only thing I'm thinking that the Cowboys yeah. could have capped out by then. But so there I'll is a cap, both... there is a cap on on right. On, on the prime time number. Um, I don't know where the Cowboys are with it, but yeah, they always, I mean, the Cowboys are number one. The Eagles fans don't want to hear that either, but Cowboys are always score. number one. Um, Did you yeah, see the, the uh, ratings on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah. The, absurd. <laughs> the greatest individual non Sunday in the history of the league, as far as rating goes for the three games. There you go with uh, a, a a very watchable early game, which it isn't always with Detroit, with Buffalo being in it, the Cowboys and the Giants, and then the Sunday night game, a pretty damn good Minnesota team in a game that went right down to the wire. Best one-day ratings in the history of the NFL for a non-Sunday. And, uh, you know, who was number one amongst the Sunday? The Cowboys. The Giants, Giants, Cowboys. Not well, the, and not that also... Game. That has to do with the time. It's four o'clock mm -hmm. game. The four o'clock window is typically uh, the typically the night window is better, but maybe it changes on Thanksgiving. No, the night it uh, you're, you're comparing apples and orange, oranges. Usually, the night window is better because it's the only game. When you have a four o'clock window Eastern time that isn't competing with any other game, no, then the four o'clock window is going to be the biggest because every Sunday you've got other games at four o'clock. So no, well, one that's individual true. Game. 
is going to um, be able to compare to. The but Sunday just in night. general, television prime time is is you know that's why Sunday night is, um, you know, prime time television that that generates the most money, um, and everything, not just the NFL, um, regular. TV shows prime right. time is prime time. Um, it, but the Cowboys look, Cowboys are, are the marquee team in this league. Um, Eagles fans are never going to like to hear that, but it's just a reality. They are the marquee team in this league. And uh, Thursday, uh, Thanksgiving Thursday is a little bit different animal because it's a holiday, not just any Thanksgiving. I, I did want to mention this before we get Scotty up. Um, and I ran this out to my, uh, listeners on WIP last night and they got one didn't get the other one I uh, don't know if you've seen the results the first Pro Bowl voting of the fans was released John and two Philadelphia Eagles are starting at their position as of the first fan vote and the fans get one third the coaches get a vote and the players get a vote each one third and that's how they decide the Pro Bowl starters and this is not the final fan votes just the first results released did you see the results um, I did see them. I didn't really pay that much attention to them. Okay, um, so the two Eagles who right now are leading at their position would be? Uh, Jason Kelsey, I know, was one of them. That would be correct. Um, I forget the other one. I'll tell you who the other one is because it surprised me a little bit. When I saw that two Eagles lead, I tried to guess right off the top of my head who it was going to be. Kelsey was my first guest. My second guest was Lane Johnson. Not correct. My next would have been big play slay. Not correct. Javon Hargrave at defensive oh, tackle yeah, Javon. is yeah. actually leading the DTs. He's either first or second because they got two starters. He, he, but he is would be a starter right now if the uh, voting were to be capped and the players and the coaches didn't vote. He's having a heck of a year, Johnny Mack, which is kind of good news, bad news. Good news is he's helping the Eagles get the 10 and one bad news is it's going to cost the Eagles if they want to keep them. Yeah, that's a typical decision. I mean, and it always has been because, you know, Javon's a very good pass rusher, very good pass rusher. One of the best, uh, non not named Aaron Donald interior pass rushers in the NFL. Um, not great at stopping the run. So, you know, you got to, there's a little bit of a give and take there. How much do you want? Uh, and pass rushers get paid, Jody. Let's be honest. Even so, at the deep T position, more so on the outside, but DTs who can get to the quarterback get paid to ask and Dominican too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they got a lot of difficult decisions to make. And we talked about almost their entire defense is on uh, a contract year. Uh, and a lot of them are performing and playing well. They have a lot of difficult decisions to make. And Javon's one of them because he's also um, post 30 as well. So that comes into it as well. The age comes into it. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be Howie Roseman after this season um, to make some of these difficult decisions. But Jay Bond is having a big year at the right time, just like Miles Sanders. A lot of guys, big year at the right time. Uh, opinion out of you. Say the contracts are similar. Hargrave, Hargrave getting a better deal, maybe an extra year. <sighs> maybe a couple extra bucks because he's having a better statistical year, but it comes down to either Hargrave or Fletcher Cox. Which one's how we bring him back? Well, he should bring Javon back. Um, you know, he's, but Fletcher he's always, is he's always taking care of Fletcher. Fletcher Fletcher's is one of his one guys. Of his yeah. Fletcher is one of Howie's uh, favorites. Just saw, you know, he, he had one of his best games of the year, actually. Um, Fletcher, yeah, um, and, a and he got a game guy. ball, uh, as Jonathan Gannon mentioned yesterday. But Javon's played better, and he's younger. Um, yeah, I, I, he's still at the height of his career. Fletcher's clearly was a better player, 
than Javon has ever been or likely will ever be, but he's clearly descending and has descended from that point. Javon's still at the apex of his career and he's a better player and he's younger. To me, it's pretty simple, but the, the things that make it difficult is, you know, when you have all time franchise greats, and that's what Fletcher Cox is at the Eagles fan summer. That is an all time franchise great. One of the best defensive players in this franchise's history. When you when you have those players, it makes it more difficult to I move agree. on from that. But uh, how he took care of him once this past year with fourteen million dollars after they cut him and let him go free agent before you can blink, he was re-signed to a fourteen million dollar deal. So the Eagles have shown a propensity to take care of Fletcher Cox. That's why I think it's an intriguing question. One we don't have to worry about right now. We will as soon as the season ends. Hopefully it's after a parade for you Eagle fans. Um, but uh, it, it is a fun debate to have even uh, leading up to the postseason. I right, John McMahon. I'm Jody McDonald. Put it together. It's Mac and Mac here on Birds 365. One of uh, our fun guys that we have on from time to time. Scott Grayson from Fox 29. Uh, sports anchor and host of Props and Locks is scheduled to join us next year on Birds 365. So stick around. At Pond Lee Hockey.